There are multiple different theories about where music evolved from, why we have music in our lives. One of them suggests that music may have evolved to try and help mother-infant communication. And this argues that music developed out of something called motherese. Now motherese is a way of speaking to babies that we often adopt automatically that involves strong, high melodic arches, calm patterns, slightly sing-song qualities to it. And the argument is that motherese is easier for babies to understand and therefore helps with communication. Now certainly we see that babies can actually perceive sounds as early as around 19-20 weeks uh, during pregnancy and babies have been shown to respond to sounds that they've heard during the womb after birth. And we also see that mothers communicate very well with babies using singing and music. For example, singing to babies compared to speaking to babies leads to stronger visual attention from the baby, less movement and longer periods of attention. We also find that the mothers themselves feel more emotionally close to their babies when they've been singing with them compared to speaking to them. But in terms of whether there are kind of wider benefits of that, this is something that's been researched quite a bit over the last few years. So what's been shown is that for babies themselves, uh, if a baby is born prematurely, for example, then singing and music in neonatal intensive care can be of real value. For example, it can help the babies to uh, stop moving around so much, so they're wasting fewer calories, so it's keeping them calmer. It can also help them to feed better, which again helps with this calorific intake and weight gain. And this can also build up to them being able to leave hospital sooner. If a baby is born healthily, then we also find that over time, singing and music actually help with their language developments. So because music is cognitively easier to process than language if it's kept in these simple melodic phrases, then it can actually help with the development of the brain architecture that then actually goes on to develop into speech. For mothers as well, we also find benefits. For example, listening to music during pregnancy is associated with lower levels of stress and anxiety and also lower levels of depression in mothers. And there are even suggestions these benefits can last over into the perinatal period, into the postnatal period. And we also find that mothers who listen to music, for example, during the birth process, actually need lower levels of pain medication and in some studies have been found to have shorter labour. But post-birth is where I think it gets really interesting because we're actually starting to see data that are suggesting that listening to music could help the stress and mental health of new mothers. And I've been involved in this with some of my colleagues over the last few years, where we've particularly been looking at postnatal depression. Now, postnatal depression is a very difficult condition to treat. It affects probably around 13% of mothers in the UK each year, but some suggestions are actually that it could be as high as 30%. Um, it's very difficult to tell because many mothers don't contact any health professionals when they're feeling the symptoms. And in fact, many mothers don't even realise that what they're experiencing is any different from the normal tiredness and difficulties and challenges, as well as the wonders of having a new baby. But what's particularly difficult about treating postnatal depression is that the, it, many mothers don't take medication if they're breastfeeding. And many mothers also don't have the time to attend um, counselling or psychological therapies. And they can even feel worried about the stigma of going to these if they're concerned that it's admitting in some way that they're not coping as well as they should be or could be as a mother. So because of this, there's been interest over the last few years about whether community-based psychosocial programmes could actually help new mothers and their mental health. And one of the ones that I worked on was looking specifically at singing programmes for new mothers. Now, building on the research I mentioned before about the potential anthropological evolutionary basis of singing, there's a theoretical argument for why singing might help. But also singing provides the opportunity for mothers to meet other people in their communities who might be having the same kind of mental health challenges and therefore find a support group as well. So one of the studies I worked on, we ran a randomised control trial for mothers who had postnatal depression. And they were randomised either into 10 week programmes of usual care, 10 weeks of usual care with weekly social groups with other mothers who also had postnatal depression, or 10 week programmes of social groups with singing involved. And what we found was that whilst postnatal depression does gradually get better over time, we found that the mothers who were in the singing group recovered about a month earlier than the mothers in either of the other two groups. And this is really promising because it's important in postnatal depression to try and help mothers to recover earlier because we find that the longer a mother has symptoms, the more likely these symptoms are actually going to turn into longer term depression. And for about 25% of mothers, they actually go on to experience symptoms for over a year. 
But with the singing classes, we were particularly intrigued about, well, why was it the singing but not the social? Because the social groups on their own didn't really have any faster improvement compared to usual care. So we ran some follow-up studies to look at this as well. We ran a qualitative study where we compared the uh, responses from mothers who'd been in the social group with mothers in the singing group. Now, some of the groups reported similar mechanisms. So they said they enjoyed being part of a group with other mothers, having a regular structure in their weeks. But in fact, what we found was for the singing group, there were particular mechanisms that were reported more than for the social group. For example, mothers in the singing group particularly spoke about the benefits they felt of the singing in bonding them with their baby. And we actually followed up on this and did a, a laboratory study to try and understand this a bit more. So what we did is we actually worked with mothers to take part in a singing session and a social session, and we randomised the order of these. And we looked at what happened to mothers' perceived closeness with their babies when they were singing with them compared to when they were playing or chatting with them. And we found that they were much closer, they reported being much closer after the singing session. But the mothers also had greater reductions in stress hormone levels of cortisol during the singing session compared to the social session. And stress is very much linked in with perceived closeness. And we found there was an association between this reduction in cortisol and the increase in mother-infant bonding. So this certainly could be one of the mechanisms by which 10-week singing programmes can be helping postnatal depression. But we also found other mechanisms too. Some of the mothers particularly spoke about the emotional expression they got from singing and that this was a benefit for them because it gave them an outlet for what they might be feeling during the weeks. Uh, and they also spoke about the immersive nature of the music, the fact it was a very mindful activity that gave them space away from their stresses and worries. And they also spoke about music being a tool, something they could actually use back at home with their babies to help them to sleep or feed or stop crying. And this was making them feel more confident and able as mothers. So it was actually translating back into their broader experiences of motherhood. We also did another follow-up study on this and found that the mothers who engaged in singing programmes, they actually start to engage more in music and other aspects of their daily lives as well. So it suggests it's not just about the one or two hours a week of singing, but it's about how this stimulates other musical activities. So because of these really promising results from this study, we've now been working to deliver this programme to more mothers who've got postnatal depression. In partnership with an organisation called Breathe, we've been working in South London, particularly with mothers who are from uh, more deprived areas or who might be facing additional challenges. And we've been finding that, again, these programmes are helping to reduce their symptoms of postnatal depression. So as we move forward, the kind of big opportunities and questions are, could we actually be offering this as something very simple for mothers all across the country? Many music groups exist in communities already. Could we be referring these mothers into these programmes to try and help with their mental health? Could we even be using this as a preventative thing, so encouraging mothers very early on after birth to start engaging in musical activities for the bonding with their babies, for their own mental health and for their baby's development as well. And also from a research perspective, we're interested in, well, what are the other benefits that music might be having? What about for fathers, for example? Their own mental health needs during the period of fatherhood, the early period of fatherhood, are often unmet as well. So this gives us a really nice opportunity to provide a service that actually fills current gaps in terms of what's provided for new mothers and also provides this joined up approach between what's offered in terms of health and social care and also what's being offered by arts and community sectors as well. And overall what this hopefully suggests is that music could be something we could be promoting amongst new mothers to try and improve their experiences of motherhood.